What's up guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're gonna build a backlit LED sign. So to start off this project, I used a piece of three quarter inch plywood to cut the backer board and the letters out of. You could really use any kind of board, either pine or whatever you feel like, but this is what I had, so I decided to use it. So because I'm cutting this all out by hand, we went to Staples and had our logo printed on 36 by 48 paper. It only cost a couple dollars, but it was definitely a lifesaver. It's important when you choose your font that you wanna use that you make it thick enough that you'll be able to hide all the wiring and lights behind it later. So basically what I did here was I measured the height of the letters and then I left three to four inches on either side and I cut two identical pieces, one for the backer board and one for the letters themselves. In hindsight, I probably could have picked a smaller width for the letters because I didn't need all that extra material, but it made cutting them out easier. I had some place to clamp. So now that I had both the backer board and the piece of wood that I was gonna cut the letters out of ripped down, I proceeded to lay out the printed out version of our logo and tape it down so I could trace it with a razor and cut the letters out for use later. So this was actually one of the only mistakes I made on this. I shouldn't have just relied on the razor marking to cut these letters out. I should have traced it with a pencil or a marker so that I could see it a little bit clearer when I was cutting it with the jigsaw. You see, I had to go back and trace every letter out with a pencil. So that was a little time wasted. As with most things with an engine, God, I want one of these things. So now that I had all the letters cut out with the jigsaw, I actually used the spindle sander that my brother bought to build his electric guitar. This worked really well on all the curves and edges in the letters and helped me get them ready to be routed. So all the letters are routed and sanded. Tried not to show you too much of the routing process because it was uh, a little dangerous. <laughs> just using the router flipped upside down, just resting on the table, which was not the brightest move, but I don't have a router table, so that's how I had to do it. So to go with the theme that this sign is ultimately going on, I went with white beadboard as the backer cover. You could really do anything you want as far as either painting the plywood or putting some other kind of backer, but as far as getting the best reflection for the light, I think you should choose a light color. So to secure the beadboard to the plywood, I just put some wood glue on both sides and then laid some weight I had lying around in the garage on top of it until it dried. This is lit. So after the glue had dried, I ran a flush cut router bit around it just to make the beadboard and the plywood the exact same size. So in an effort not to waste any wood, I took the cutoff piece from the letters and I cut small strips to use as standoffs behind the letters. You'll see what I mean in a second, if you don't know what a standoff is. So to get the orientation of the letters correct on the sign, I used the same template that I cut out for the letters and taped it to the backer board so it made measuring easy. So by standoff, this is what I meant. It essentially spaces the letter off the sign so there's room for the light to reflect against the backboard. Another thing to note, when you drill the holes for mounting the letters and these standoffs, make sure you keep them as far apart as possible so that your LED light strips will fit between them. So with everything laid out and all the holes drilled, it was time to sand all the letters down to get them ready for paint. Thankfully I had some help with this one because it took a long time. 
So again, to help the light reflect better, I painted the back of the letters white, and then the front I painted with gray to go with the theme of the trailer this was going on. So whatever color fits the theme you're looking for, just go with that. So now comes the fun part, putting the lights on and wiring everything. I know it sounds scary, but it's really not that bad. To help the process, I bought these connectors for RGB light strips. It essentially lets you cut the LED light strip on the cut marks and then reconnect them separate so you don't have to waste LEDs behind the sign when you run the wires from letter to letter. So next, for these particular LEDs, I cut them into three LED diode strips. You'll see the cut mark on your LEDs, it might be different, but that's how these worked out. So I cut small sections of these and then stuck them to the back of each letter, making sure to stay clear of the standoff. So in order to get the wires from the LEDs to the back of the sign where we can wire them all together, I had to drill a hole to run those connector wires that I showed you earlier through to the back of the sign. I actually made a mistake on this first letter and drilled too large of a hole because I had to get the plastic connector through, but I realized on all the other letters I was going to be cutting this connector off anyway to wire all the letters together. So just something to note. So for these particular LEDs, they are RGB, so red, green, blue, and have four conductors that you'll be cutting through on each one of these strips. You're just going to want to make sure that every LED strip is wired in the same way, meaning all the 12 volt wires go together, all the green wires go together, all the blue wires go together, and all the red wires go together. You don't want a blue going to a green because then this whole system won't work. Now it was just pretty much rinse and repeat, the same steps for the first letter as all the other letters. One important thing I forgot to mention, you're going to want to make sure the holes you're drilling to run your wires through are hidden behind the letters. You don't want to see these holes from the front side. At this point it's time to flip the sign over. I just used two pieces of scrap to hold the letters up off the saw horses that I was using to prevent them from being damaged while I did the wiring. So in an effort to streamline this process as much as possible, I stripped all the wires and then connected each letter's LED strips together so that I only had to solder one connection for each letter rather than one connection for every single LED strip. One thing that was definitely a lifesaver is this third arm tool with the magnifying glass and the light that I got from Harbor Freight. Basically, it's just two small clamps that hold the wires together and prevent them from pulling apart while you solder. After I soldered each of the wires, I made sure to cover everything with heat shrink in order to prevent things from grinding out and causing damage to the lights. So now that all the lights are wired together, it's time to wire the controller back to all the lights. You're going to want to make sure that when you strip these wires, double check that the colors correspond with the RGB and 12 volt, because in my case, the colors didn't match the wires I decided to use. So just be careful of that, that you don't end up crisscrossing something. With all the wiring complete, I decided to use these nylon cable clamps to neaten up all the wiring on the back side of the sign. This isn't 100% necessary, but I didn't want all the wires looking like spaghetti back there. So in an effort to tie everything together and give the edge of the sign a finished look, I ripped down some pallet wood and finish nailed it to the side to create like a picture frame effect. So with everything done, it's time to unveil the sign. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at the time Don't I hope you guys think this sign came out as awesome as I did. If you did, leave a comment down below, like this video, and if you haven't already, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Hey.